praying 10, 15 minutes, then somebody else praying 10, 15 minutes in leading. But I'm talking about you by yourself. 60 minutes straight can be challenging for some. For some, you know. But we wonder why we pray oftentimes, but don't hear from God. Because often in our prayer, we never break the restriction of the weakness of the flesh. We never break that. We never break that. And, and fasting disciplines the flesh. Fasting disciplines the flesh. Fasting is your way of telling the flesh what it can have and what it cannot have. You know? And, and you can have the abundance of revelation, but if you don't have self-discipline, you won't make it in God. And you won't live holy. You know? And so when I look back on, on my life, if, I can, if, if, if I'm allowed to make myself vulnerable, and I look back on my life, I wish I would not have despised fasting. Because fasting was put there to discipline me and to bring my body under, uh, under subjection to, my, to me, the spirit, not to my spirit, to me, the spirit. You know, fasting was put there to, to, for me to discipline myself, to bring my members under subjection. But, but I avoided fasting. But I looked around and saw that the same mindset that avoided fasting went with me in every other aspect of my life. Is anybody with me? So, so now you, you know the word of God, but you have no discipline. You know, you know the word of God, but you have no perseverance. Amen. And this is because you avoid those things that will bring you into that discipline. Are you all working with me? Amen. And so when we fast and when we pray, what does it do? When we fast and we pray, now we look at, we're, we're in Acts the 13th chapter. Amen. We're looking where these people, they had fasted and they had prayer, prayed. But the Bible also says that they ministered to the Lord. We often never consider, I know that, that Byron and Tisha, Pastor Byron and Tisha have heard this on last night. We, we often never consider um, ministering to God. We consider God ministering to us. But the Bible says they minister to the Lord. Many times when we go into prayer, we go straight to the asking part. And we don't praise God. We don't minister to God. We don't, we, don't, we don't glorify God. We just go straight to what we need. Amen? So, so this is why many prayers are not answered. I'm talking about answered in that moment. One of the prayers is because the vessel that is praying has not, has not been properly prepared to even meet God, to even talk to God. You know, in, in, in the charismatic Christianity movement, and Doc, you could... You know, if you have anything to share, just amen, chime on in. But in the charismatic Christianity movement, it is the most um, discipline lacking movement of any religion, really. You know? Like you take Islam. Islam, they have a set time to pray. And they're going to do that. Every day. I don't care if they're free or if they're in jail, they're going to do that. They got a certain direction that they're going to point to. I mean, that they're going to face. You know? It's, it's certain things that they're disciplined to do. Amen? If you come into one of their temples, you know a Muslim. Whether they're male or female. Because it's just a, a way that they, that they honor their religion, that their faith. You know, and I know that God has not called us to, to, to search such certain things, but we are still supposed to have certain disciplines ourselves. Are you all working with me? Certain disciplines ourselves. That if you don't have that discipline, you're not reverencing God. And God won't fellowship with you. That's why you pray and God don't answer. Or oh, is anybody hearing this word? Amen. If, if, see, I want God to fellowship with me. I'm living in a time in my life and where I need to hear God. 
I need God to fellowship with me. I don't need to get down and give a routine prayer, amen, and, and, and just get up and, and don't even anticipate the, the answering of the Spirit. Because I need a word from God. Anybody need a word from God? You don't. I don't need to just be talking to God, talking to God. I need God to talk to me. Amen. And so when God said, well, well, prepare that vessel. Keep, keep that vessel to be a vessel that I will communicate with. You know, fast, discipline that vessel. Paul says he beat his body under. Amen. He beat his body under. Why? Keeping himself sensitive to God. Are you all working with me? And so many times some of us need to practice praying an hour. You know, practice it. And, and you'll find that that first five, ten minutes seem like they're forever when you have not prayed that long. You'll find yourself trying to look for things more to say and other things to pray about, you know. But then go a little further and go a little further. Go to that point where you break the weakness of the flesh. Or oh, is anybody here in God? When you break the weakness of the flesh, what did God say in his word to Paul? In your weakness, my strength is made perfect. Is anybody here in God? And so sometimes we have to go to that point in prayer where, where it's not dictated to by our weakness. Oh, I'm going I'm to pray five minutes. I'm going to pray ten minutes. You know, I know by then I'm going to be tired. And I may give God 15 minutes. But sometimes you have to pray, pray past that. To where your flesh has no more influence. Amen? And fasting helps us discipline this, this body to come into fellowship with God. Amen? Come into fellowship with God. And then when you, when you begin prayer, begin it with praise. I remember when, when Doc taught us how to pray years ago. And she said, always start prayer with praise. You know, praise God. Don't, don't treat God like... You could, you could care less about who he is and his sovereignty, you know, and you're just going to ask him for whatever you want, and, and you're not even going to praise him. You're not going to glorify him. Are you all working with me? Don't treat God like that. Treat him like he's God. And I gave the illustration on last night. I said when one of my daughters called me and they, they want something or whatever, um, if, if they call me and, and while they're talking to me, they're talking about everybody else in the background, or whatever, or they have another conversation, or they're playing video games or something like that, I'll tell them, hey, you call me when you want to just talk to me. Amen? Because I don't have your attention right now. You know, and it's, 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 so if I don't have your attention, I'm not going to give you mine. You call me when you want to talk to me. Amen? Same is true with God. We try to pray to God in passing, pray to God in doing this here, and God don't even have our attention. You know? I used to often feel like, like I'm praying when I'm driving. And I'm not saying you can't talk to God. But there's a such thing as talking to God and there's no such thing as prayer. Entering into prayer. You know? Amen. It's, it's, it's not always good to, for your prayer life to be in your car. When, when, you know, in your car and you you doing 101 things, but, but you've um, appeased yourself by saying you prayed today. You need to, you need to set aside time. For God. Just like you set aside time for school. You set aside time for your, your um, job. You need to set aside time for God. That's, that's reverence. Are you all working with me? So, amen. So, for, from now on, when we pray, we want to hear from God. But we have to be vessels that God will talk to. And these are the, th these are the ways that bring our, our mind into fellowship with God. I was talking, I was telling the class on when God called me to the apostleship. When God called me to the apostleship, I was in a jail cell, and I was reading, um, I was reading everything Paul wrote. I was just attracted to the, right, the teachings of Paul. So I was reading all of his, I would, I would read Ephesians and Galatians and Corinth. I will read those, those stories in, in, in a few minutes and, and start back over and read them all over again, you know? And... When I was there reading it, I was sitting on my bunk, and then I began to meditate on what I had read, and I was actually fasting. I had done turned down, and in jail it's hard to fast, because if you, don't, if you don't eat when they give it to you, you ain't going to eat, you know? But I was like, no, I need to hear from God. 
I could be in here in full and stay in here forever. Full. I need to hear from God. <laughs> so I turned down the plate and I began to read everything that Paul wrote. And, and I went into meditation and the Lord t told me that I was an apostle. Now I want, want to share with you what took place inside of me before he told me that that would allow God to fellowship with me. The word that I was reading had already saturated my mind. The word that I was reading had already put me in a place where I'm, I'm, I'm ready to hear from God now. You know, I'm ready. It, it, it was consecrating me unto God. It was setting me apart from everything else that was going on in that jail. And, and it was just me and God. Amen. And, and when I begin to meditate on the word, the Lord says that I call you to be all that, that you're reading. I call you to be that. I call you to be, and what the word he used was one of my champions. He said, and you could be that, or you could choose to die in these prisons. Make your choice. And I said, I want to be what you called me to be. I want to be what you called me to be. And so now, God said that, and when I came home from the situation, I didn't run to Doc and say, God told me I'm an apostle. That's, that's not how that went. You and I was in an airport. We was in an airport going somewhere, I think to Jamaica, and you said, um, do you not now know what you are in God? And I say, well, I believe God has told me that I am what you are. And Doc say, well, I'm glad that God has finally revealed it to you. Because if you remember, and it's good that you're here because you can validate if, if this story is real, a year before that, approximately like uh, approximately a year before that, you would come to me and you was all giddy. I'm like, what's wrong with you? And she said, God spoke to me about you. And I say, okay. She said, God told me what your calling was, but, but I can't tell you right now because you wouldn't be able to bear it. And I'm like, okay. And I forgot all about that. You know, I forgot all about that, and, and it didn't really come back to me until this year, you know, that God had, had, had already shown you that. So it wasn't like I went to Doc and said, I'm an apostle, and Doc co-signed it. God had already revealed that to her, you know, and then God revealed it to me. Amen? And it wasn't like she came to me and said, you're an apostle, and then I just agreed with it. God had revealed it. But the time that God revealed it to me, he had made my spirit ready. You know the Bible says, whom you yield your members to, them you become servants to. The same is true even inside of prayer. If you yield your mind to, to studying, if you yield your mind to meditating on God, you're, you're, you're yielding your mind to God, and God will minister to you. But if you entreat God like he's, he's a person that you talk to, on, in the passing, God says, I am God. I, I'm not going to be treated that way. And so you'll be sending up all these vain timbers up to God, and they'll never reach heaven. But if you actually isolate time for God, meditate on the word of God, God will speak. Amen? And I don't want to take up any more of the time. I want us to go into prayer. But have you learned anything? Come on, let's give God a praise. Praise the Lord, saints. I just wanted to, um, I just wanted to, to um, include something that that the Lord has ministered to me. And I really want all of us to be very attentive to this because, and I need you to be prayerful that, that I'm able to explain what I'm, what I'm about to say. I was in, um, in, in the word that God has given us about salvation. And the first thing that came to me was, what about prayer? How do we entreat prayer now? And 
of course the Lord is faithful. He's faithful. In, you know, when you seek after uh, the knowledge of God, you'll, you'll, you'll get it. You know, uh, he'll, he's faithful to give it to you. And um, when, this is what the Lord shared with me. In light of the word that he has given us concerning salvation, one of the things that we learn is that Jesus lives in our flesh. We got that, don't we? That Jesus actually lives in this body, that this body belongs to him. And he is living in this flesh. And as I was sharing with some of the ministers yesterday, um, there has to be a, a posture that we take. Um, we have to take that posture not only in, in prayer, but we have to also take it in, in our livelihood, in our everyday living. And that's a posture that says, this body belongs to Jesus, that Jesus is living in my flesh. So now what does that really what does that really have to do with prayer? Okay, now if, 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 now if God is saying that I got to live every day, because one of the things that, I, that I've taught last week or week before, whenever I was in Fort Lauderdale last Sunday, one of the things that I was, that I was trying to minister last Sunday is something that God shared with me. And it's going to bless us. It's going to help us as we pray. Um, the whole time that Jesus was here, the whole time, his, his, his entire time here was to show us what a son of God really is. It, that's, that's his whole walk. And I want you to see something, and, and, and maybe you'll have to play this again and again to, before you really hear it in your spirit. But I want you to look at the New Covenant, look at the scriptures when you talk about, when you're reading about Jesus and everything that he did. You notice there's some, there's some key things that he said, like the words that I speak are not mine, but they are the Father's. Um, but there's a key scripture, and, and, and um, Lisa, maybe you can find you a pattern. Some of you guys can find it. It says, hitherto my father work, and I work. You remember, remember that scripture? Um, and that's one. And then another one, he said, he said, the works that I do, they are not mine, but they are the father. The words that I speak, they are not mine, but they are the father. And then one day, Philip asked him, said, well, show us the Father. And, and then the, the Lord, Father God, spoke through him and said, have I been so long with you and you don't know me? You know, have I been here? I mean, you know, I'm right here with you and you don't know me. Now, the significance of that, we lessened the significance of that. The significance of that was everything, and I want you to see this, Everything that Jesus, that you, that those people saw Jesus do, was the Father doing it through him. We in agreement with that? He made testimony that it was the Father that was working all the works. It was the Father that was doing the preaching. It was the Father that was doing the healing. It was the Father. Everything that was done in the flesh was the Father. In other words, Jesus made a statement. He made one one statement. He said. I live by the Father. Remember that? He said, I live by the Father. In other words, this, this vessel that you're looking at is alive because God is in it. It's, the, it's, the, it's God that's in this vessel that, that's got it alive. Now, you take that scripture and you contrast it or you compare it to what Paul said. Paul said in his revelation of Christ, he said, the life that I live in the flesh... Now, it is not I that live, but it's Christ that liveth in me. Is that right? So what was Paul saying? Paul was saying, this body that you see alive now is alive because of Jesus. Jesus said that his body that he was in was alive because of God. Are you, are you, are you seeing that? But then when Jesus got ready to leave, he said, he said if I don't go, the comforter can't come. But then he put a, put a description on the comforter. He said... 
my father and I will come and sup with you. You remember that? So that, that let us know that, that when God came back, God was coming back in the form of the Holy Ghost, and Jesus was coming back in the form of the Holy Ghost. So when you got the Holy Ghost, you got both of them. Amen? Glory to God. But now this is what I want you to see. I want you to see this right here because this is gonna this is gonna help us. It's gonna it's gonna help us as we as we pray, and it's gonna make the difference. It's gonna make a difference in God moving and not moving because the people perish for lack of knowledge. But God is giving us knowledge. He's giving us the knowledge, and 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 He wants us to use that knowledge. He wants us to walk in that knowledge that He's given us. I want you to see that. Everything that Jesus did for three and a half years, the ministry of Christ, the ministry for three and a half years, he had he he, he selected twelve men to watch him. I want you to look at it from that perspective. I'm I'm I'm, I'm gonna pick you out now, you twelve. Come on with me, he, and he would just he would just uh, say, "Come, follow me," and they just drop whatever they were doing and they get up and follow him. That was God. But you know why? Because the scriptures say, thine they were, but thy gave them to me. So it was God that selected the ones that were going to follow Jesus. So now these, he got these 12 men, and he's walking with these 12 men, and, and he gets up to Lazarus' tomb, and he, and he, and he says, he, he starts to pray, and he says, Father, I'm praying out loud for their benefit, because I know you always hear me. And, and isn't that what he said? So who raised Lazarus from the dead? God raised up Lazarus from the dead at Jesus' request. Isn't that right? But notice what he said. He said, he said, you always hear me. Always, right? Somebody asked Jesus, one of his disciples say, what do we do that we may work the works of God? You know what his answer was? He said, I do what I do, paraphrasingly. He said, I do what I do because the Father loved me. And then he said, the Father loves me because I love him and do always those things that please him. Right? He said, that's why the Father loved me, because I always do the things that please him. I'm obedient to him. So, so now, because I'm obedient... And I'm always doing the will of the Father. I'm always in agreement with the Father is what he was saying. I'm always in agreement with him. So whatever needs to be done at any point in time in my walk, he'll do it. Because I'm always in agreement with him. Now, this is what I want us to see. I want us to see this point right here. As he walked and his witnesses, his 12 witnesses were with him. They saw God work through the flesh. They looked at Jesus and saw God in the flesh. So one day, Jesus said, well, well, who do men say I am? Then he said, well, who do you say I am? And Peter said, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. And he said, flesh and blood didn't reveal that. Now, God had to tell you that. My father had to tell you that. In other words, Peter had come to the place where God opened his eyes and let him see that God himself was in that vessel. He, saw, he looked at Jesus and he saw more than a man. He saw that God was in that vessel because in order for you to be the son of God, they knew God had to be in you. They understood that. And so... Uh, Jesus commended the fact that my Father has opened your eyes and let you see that he is in me. And I'm alive because of him. And everything that I'm doing, Peter, you realize now it's God that's doing it through me. We got that? We got that? Now, I want you to go this far. Hear what I'm saying. Everything that Jesus did was to show those disciples and us what it was going to be, what he, 
everything that God was doing through Jesus was to reveal to us what Jesus was going to be doing through us when he was glorified. Do you understand what I'm saying? Are y'all understanding that? In other words, okay, my father, if, if my father has given, given my father, my father, this person is sick. I pray to my father, my father heal him. There's coming a day that I'm going to be in you. And you're going to need me to work a miracle. And I'm going to do it. Remember he made this statement. He said, he say, hitherto you haven't asked me anything. But the day shall come that whatsoever you ask the father in my name that I will do. He said, that's what I will do. So in other words, whatever is in him, whatever's in her, whatever's in you, Jesus in, in all of us, whatever righteousness is being done, whatever works are being done, it's, it's Jesus doing it through you. And so, that, so his tenure here, his walk here was to reveal now, this is how God's going to work through, this is how my father and I are going to work through you. So I want, you to, I want you to watch what he does through me because my walk sets the boundaries. My walk is setting the boundaries for your walk. In other words, my walk is an example of what your walk is going to be. Do you understand that? What the Father is doing through me is an example of what the Father's, what I'm going to do through you when, my, when the day of my glorification comes. Remember in the 17th chapter of St. John, he said, Father, glorify me with thine own self. And then he explained that glory. He said, as thou hast given him power over all flesh. So what is he saying? He's saying, you, you, I'm, when, you, when I come back in the form of the Holy Ghost, you have given me power over all flesh. I've got the power that, that flesh can't sin no more if I'm in there. I will, I will not sit, that flesh will not turn against man anymore. Not on its own. Man got to take that flesh into sin. Man got to usurp authority over me. So I, 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 you've given me power of all flesh, and now whatever they ask in my name, that you're going to do. Because that I'm the one that's going to do the work through them now. Do you understand what I'm saying? Jesus is the one that's working through you. Jesus is the one that's working through you. That's why he said, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men. He's the one. See, this is his glorification. And the Father is glorified in the Son. The Father is glorified when Jesus is allowed to work through us. So now, when I pray, this, I, was, I was talking to the Father and, and I got to pray in light of that. I got to pray in light of the fact that, that Jesus is living in my flesh. So when I approach the Father, when I come to the Father in prayer, I got to make sure when I say things like, Father, I need you to del deliver such a one for Christ's sake. I got to be able to say that for, for, for Christ's sake. You know, what am I saying? I'm saying that the Christ in me and I, my soul, me, me and the Christ that you placed in me are in agreement. We're in agreement in this situation. So now, if we, we're talking about getting answers to prayers. The only way that God is going to respond readily and steadily and steadfastly is when we are in agreement with the Christ that's in us. When we have no adversity in our flesh, when we are not trying to usurp any authority over this flesh, when we now have surrendered totally to the Jesus that is in us, I can approach God and, 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 and you know what? When... when, when, when um, when, when I approach the Lord now, it's like, okay, I'm, I'm searching myself. Remember he said fasting is a discipline. 
it's a discipline uh, mechanism. And it allows us to come into the sensitivity of the spirit. So what I'm doing is I'm saying now, am I, am, my, daily, my daily activities, my daily activities, my daily conversation, am I in agreement with the Christ that's in me? Because in reality, this is what's supposed to be happening every, in every moment of our life. It happened in every moment of Christ's life, and it kept happening in every moment of ours. If I could be just really just in layman's terms, this is what it means. You know how you all say, I can get up here and preach a message, or Pastor Mike can preach a message. And you say, boy, God show preached us today. God show ministered us. You ever, you ever said that? And you meant that. You meant what you're saying is you heard from God. Right? Your God was speaking in the message today. I heard God. That's supposed to be in every time we open our mouth. Every time we talk, we should be speaking the oracles of God. Everything that come out of us should be, that's why I said our words should be edification. They should be edifying. Everything that come out of our mouth should be God, should be Jesus speaking through us. That's why he told us no jesting. He told us um, don't lie to one another because Jesus is not going to lie. Right? Because everything that man sees about us should be Christ. Did not he say, see no man after the flesh anymore? Don't entertain him after the flesh. We should be entertaining Christ. And so everything that is going on, everything I'm doing from the time I wake up until I go to sleep should be Christ working through me. Even if it's on my job, it should be Christ working on the job. It should be Christ communicating with the boss, Christ communicating with the people. Christ, is that's who's supposed to be living through this, fle this flesh. So what does that mean? That means that I'm, I am that witness. I am there now in this body listening. I'm listening to Christ. I'm listening to what he's saying right now. Okay, let's, let's go with right this minute. Right this minute, Jesus is talking to us. Right now, he's talking to us. He's been talking to us ever since I walked in the door. I've been listening to Jesus talk to us. Okay? And when, when you heard Pastor Mike say, you know, he started giving, he gave a scripture, and he was telling you what it meant, and then, then he moved to a place where, uh, where he began to, to give testimony. What he was doing, was well, his testimony was corroborating the scripture. He was showing you that, that, that that's what, that scripture was being fulfilled in me, right? That's what we are. We are witnesses. And every time we open our mouth, we should be bearing witness of something Jesus is doing through us. Are you understanding what I'm saying? We should be, every time we open our mouth, we should be bearing witness of what Jesus is doing. So what does that mean? That means that if, if, if Jesus is true, if what I'm saying is the truth, then Jesus is actually ministering to us right now, and I, Mary Banks, my soul, is sitting here listening to him. I'm listening to him. Now, if I am listening to him talk to all of us, if this is really Jesus talking to all of us, then guess what? I'm learning. I'm learning. Why would the scripture say he learned? What Jesus got to learn? He learned obedience by the things that he suffered. He wasn't talking about just the whipping on the cross. Jesus suffered many things. Jesus suffered, suffered betrayal. He suffered humiliation. He suffered when people want to stone him. People in his own hometown not believing in him. His brothers and sisters not believing in him. He suffered all of that. But he, what does scripture say? He learned. Why, what, how did he learn it? Because he let God, he let God be God in that body. He let God continue to be God, and he watched how God handled the situation. He kept watching what, how, what God's response was, and he was listening to the Father. He was listening to the Father and what the Father had to say about it. He never usurped authority and, 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 and asserted his own way. He learned. He listened and he learned. Why? Because he was in training. He was in training for what he's going to do. He watching the father do. He said, hitherto, hitherto my father worked and then I work. He's saying, up to now, 
All you've seen is my father, but the day going to come when I'm going to do what you see in my father do. It's the same thing my father's doing through me. I'm going to, one day I'm going to be doing it through you. Hallelujah. I haven't come into my glory yet, glory to God, because I haven't earned it yet. But once I die and was resurrected, I will have earned the right to be in you and do what my father has done through me. Come on, somebody. Glory to God. So when I pray, I got to pray from that respect. And if you hear what I'm saying, if you really understand what I'm saying, it'll make you holy. It'll make you more cognizant. And it'll it'll put you in a learning mode. You'll start listening for Jesus speaking through you. You'll start listening. You'll you'll begin to say, now that ain't Jesus. That's me. That's, that's, That's my disposition. That's my emotions. That's the emotions of my flesh. Da, 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 da. That ain't Christ. You understand what I'm saying? Pastor Mike, you want to add something to that, please? Bishop Lisa, Patty, y'all want to add something to this? Come, I know y'all got something to say. Praise the Lord. Because I want us to understand this. Because this is powerful, saints. This changed my life. and Because every time I talk now, I want to make sure it's Christ that's speaking through me. I'm not going to speak no vain words anymore. I don't have that vanity. I don't have that. I don't. I, I don't I, 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 I'm like, Christ ain't going to say that. And if I say it, I'm usurping authority over him. I become the usurper. I grieve him. I quench the spirit because the spirit doesn't talk like that. The spirit doesn't think like that. So I'm quenching the spirit. What am I supposed to be doing? Now watch this here. Something Patty said yesterday. This is when when, when we were talking about this. Um, Just like God was in Jesus, training Jesus how to work through, how to work through through, how God was going to work through the body. Jesus was trained, being trained how he would work through us. The day is coming in the millennium. We're in training now. That in the millennium now, we rule. And we will, we will be doing the work. Because we are the priests in the millennium. We will be the ones doing the work. Praise the Lord, ruling over the Gentiles, doing what we see Jesus do. Come on, somebody. So, we, we, so what we see in Jesus do now and what we hear him saying, glory to God, is hallelujah. You see, you, let me tell you something. Say, let me tell you where God is. God said rejoice. That's what God told me at the beginning of the year. He said rejoice. And any time that God's word come, glory to God, because the prophetic word that God gave me New Year's night was rejoice this year. He said this year is the year I want you to rejoice. Amen. Because God was going to expose himself to us. He was going to expose himself, and that's what he has done. And the devil don't like it, so the devil said, I'm going to take your joy from you. But the devil is a liar. He's not going to take our joy from us. Because let me tell you something. One thing I have learned over the years, glory to God, I have not always been what I'm supposed to be in God. But when I humble myself and repent it before the Lord and I got in line with what God's word said, I know I can stand on sure ground now. I can stand on sure ground. And when I can stand on sure ground, God is the one that exalts humility. God, you can't stop God from exalting humility. Because that's his word. So God has given us a word. Amen. He's given us a word. He's saying now, glory to God, I want you to be mindful. This is Jesus here. And Jesus is never discouraged in the face of God. He's never discouraged. Glory to God. He knows that his father is always in control. And the moment that you line up with that Jesus that's in you, the moment you say, Jesus Glory to God. When I pray and ask, when I'm asking for forgiveness, I say, Lord, forgive me for Christ's sake. What am I saying? I say, forgive me so that Christ can still work through this vessel. Forgive me so that Christ can have his way. Forgive me so that Christ can still do what he was sent here to do. For Christ's sake. If I don't deserve it, does Christ. For his sake. Because he lives in me. You know why I can say that? You know why I can keep asking him for Christ's sake? Because you ain't took him from me. Come on, somebody. You ain't took Christ from me. He's still in me. And as long as he's in me, I can say, for Christ's sake, deliver me. For Christ's sake, deliver me. Restore, 
Restore all that the enemy is trying to destroy. You restore it for Christ's sake so that Christ can be glorified. Because I'm in agreement with Christ. David said, before I was afflicted, I went astray. Yes, Lord, you, you, you done slapped me down. It's good for me. It's good for me. Glory to God. Have, God. have you ever seen anything in your life? God doing anything in your life? You know it's God. You know God got a clamp on you. Glory to God. You, 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 you know that, my God, in the natural life, I'm able to do more than I'm doing now. Why can't I do this? Why can't I do that? Glory to God. Because you know God got you. He, God got you stopped. God done put a stop on you. Glory to God. You say, okay, God. Yeah, okay, this your will for me. If this is where you got me at, okay, I'm in agreement with you. I'm in agreement with the route that you're taking me. And I'm not going to let the devil take my joy from me. I'm going to praise you anyhow. I'm going to worship you anyhow. I'm going to fast anyhow. I'm going to glorify you anyhow. It don't matter, glory to God, what tomorrow brings. As long as I know that I'm glorifying you. So I'm going to stay in agreement with you. I'm going to agree with this Jesus that's in me. And you know, I'm going to rejoice because he's still in me. Glory to God. You see, see, I can stand. See, glory to God. I can stand, sister. Sister Mabel, I can stand on solid ground as long as I know God with me. If I know God is still with me, he ain't cast me aside. He ain't kicked me to the curb. He's still in me. Glory to God. It don't matter what you think of me. Amen. If my daddy's in me. Glory to God. If, if Jesus still in this vessel... Glory to God. He got a reason he's staying in this vessel. There's a reason he don't leave. There's a reason he's not departed. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. When you do wrong, glory to God. If she do wrong, glory to God, don't rejoice if she gets slapped. That's right. That's right. Huh? Because you don't want to be slapped. Huh? Don't rejoice if God don't leave her. Glory to God. Don't rejoice because you don't want God to leave you. C come on, somebody. Y'all don't care what. And all of us have been in a place where we like, Lord, I need to get it right before you, before you just don't deal with me no more. I don't want you to stop dealing with me. Glory to God. Don't stop dealing with me now. Hallelujah. So we can bear. We can bear as long as we know God's still with me. As long as God ain't gave up on me. Come on, somebody. As long as God ain't gave up on me. And so there's no room in us for self-righteousness. You can't be self-righteous. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Did God give up on you? Glory to God. There's some things, glory to God, that some of us have done. We don't even want to pray up. We don't even want nobody to know. Am I right? We ain't testified it. We ain't told nobody about it. Come on now. Come on. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus, and hope it never come up again. Hallelujah. Glory to God. But we, we were blessed because we found out God didn't give up. Even when we gave up on ourselves, we found out God had not given up on us. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So when we pray, Theo, let's pray with that in mind. Let's pray that for Christ's sake, the Jesus that's in me, he still want to live his ministry out. He's still there. He want to live his ministry out. If God was through with me, glory to God, he turned me over to reprobate. I, glory to God, I wouldn't even have a mind to repent. Praise to God. Well, that's what we need to rejoice about. Amen. Glory to God. God ain't through with us. Hallelujah. And let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. When I, when I, when I came here, when... when when that situation that I was in came to fruition, I was on my way back to Lauderdale. And God said, you can't go back. I said, excuse me? He said, you can't go back, Lauderdale. He said, I didn't send you up here to be no wife. I sent you up here to, be the, to, be, to work in the lives of my people. And God the one gave us this. Because he wanted me to stay. Uh-huh. No money, no credit, no nothing, but he gave us gave me a house and a church. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Glory to God because he wanted us to stay. He wanted a light in this community. Glory to God. Let me tell you something. If there's a flicker left, it's enough for God. 
Come on, somebody. I said, if it's a flicker left, it's enough for God. And I, when I, I woke up, I was laying down one night, and I saw, I saw these three counties. And I saw light. It was dark. And, and I, you know how you look up in the sky and you see stars come out? But every now and then, a light would come out in the sky. A light would come out. A light would come out. That was God's word. That was God's word. That was his word. God sent us here to do a work. And if we look at us, we still here. And we ain't grieving. We gonna rejoice. I said we gonna rejoice anyhow. We gonna rejoice. We gonna rejoice. Because when the soul lines up with Jesus, see, supposing, supposing Ted Bundy had a repented, wouldn't that have been glorious for God to get the glory? Supposing Hitler had a repented, wouldn't God have gotten the glory? Wouldn't God have been glorified? Glory to God. Supposing Israel turned to Jesus. Would not God be glorified? No matter what they've done, would not God be glorified? So as long as I see that heart, whatever it took, it took it. But when I see the heart lined up with Jesus, I'm going to stand with it. I'm going to stand with it. Y'all hear what I'm saying? I say, I'm going to stand with it. Nobody may not agree but God. But I'm going to stand on God's side. I'm going to stand on God's side. Because if I get in trouble, I can't do nothing but what the Word says. That's all I can do. And if God chooses to hold me in the hollow of his love, no one can pluck me out. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. So I'm encouraged. I'm encouraged because your leader done lined himself up with the Jesus that's in him. He done lined himself up with the Jesus. Never to revisit this. Never again. Hallelujah. And that's enough for God. That's enough for God. That's something God can work with. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So we're going to worship him tonight in prayer. I want all of us to come and go down on our knees and and let us cry out to God. You can take your chair or you can get to the, whatever you want to do. Amen. But I want us all to cry out to God. I want every heart in here to just cry out to God. Say, God, we surrender to you. Give us the joy. Because the joy of the Lord is our strength. Don't let the devil take your joy, saints. Because in the beginning of this year, God said rejoice. And you know what? With the word God has given us from World Conference, I can rejoice. I got enough to carry me on into glory. Amen. Because I understand salvation now. So we're going to rejoice. We're going to rejoice. We're going to call out to the Lord in prayer and fasting. Prayer and fasting. To God is glorified. We're going to let God be glorified. Amen. Father in Jesus' name. Father in Jesus' name. Lord, bless us in Jesus' name.